This week on the Racing Insiders, we'll go to Detroit, the Belle Isle Grand Prix for Pirelli World Challenge GT, GTA, and GTS competition. IMS is there as well with their prototype class and GTD. We'll go to New Jersey Motorsports Park for Pirelli World Challenge Touring Car Class Championships and round it out with Formula Drift and Miami. Are you kidding me in this show as well? Stick around. Welcome to this week's version of the Racing Insiders, where you're going to get sports car content every week. I'm Jeff Lepper in Folsom, California, Peter Keynes in Cocoa Beach, Florida. We're going to go right to Belle Isle in Detroit, the Pirelli World Challenge GT, GTA, and GTS class, and boy, a tight street circuit, 43 cars taking the standing start in Detroit, and it was the Cadillac of Johnny O'Connell, that Cadillac Racing CTS VR, getting the double win in the GT category. Dan Knox gets his debut victory in the GTA category in that SRT Viper. Great run for him in the gentleman driver class of GTA. And GTS, Dean Martin doubles up in his Ford Mustang. Peter, you were there. You got a chance to watch some of the Pirelli World Challenge GT races. Talk about these Cadillacs, man. Those things are just on a mission right now. Well, I got to tell you, Jeff, you know, uh, you know, uh, being a part of a Chevrolet team, you got to pull for the Cadillacs when we're in Detroit. But good God, are they fun to watch. They just thunder around that place. It is ungodly. You can hear them from anywhere on the racetrack when they get back on the throttle. They're just ungodly. That 7 liter LS3 V8, just, it's unbelievable. Um, uh, great show, though. I mean, uh, everybody was competitive. You look at lap times, you know, the field's very tight. I know they might probably complain about the Cadillacs a little bit, but um, I think it was a really, really good show. And Johnny O'Connell seems to be the master of Detroit. Yeah, they might have to change that name to O'Connell Island as he won exactly. double up there last year as well. But we talk about balance of performance in that, and I think there's been a lot of talk on social media about how the Cadillacs are sort of dominating here in the early part of the Pirelli World Challenge. Well, when you look at the schedule, Cadillacs have four years of data on all these racetracks over the FIA GT3 cars, let alone the Cadillacs are going to be good on the road or on the street circuits where aero really doesn't play a matter of your performance. When we go to the permanent road courses throughout the year, Cadillacs are gonna struggle a little bit like they did at Barber, and there's only one more street race in Toronto. What's your opinion on that? Well, I think like we'll talk about again with the, you know, the Daytona prototype prototype mix here, you know, the P2 cars, it's the same thing. I mean, at street circuits, especially with these 90 degree corners and traction's a must, you know, torque's the king, and that's why the Cadillacs are shining right now. And, you know, at Long Beach and at St. Pete and then back here at Detroit. Uh, you know, I think we get to temporary, uh, real permanent road courses and then all of a sudden the GT3 cars will shine. You know, the Cadillacs are heavy. I think their big advantage is torque, just like the Daytona prototypes over the P2 cars. It's it's a torque situation when you're, you know, they're drag races off of every one of these 90 degree corners and especially when it's tight. And well, and the other thing, Jeff, I, get, I agree. The other thing is you got to say it's all Johnny O'Connell because he, he owns that place. So, you know, it's, there's got to be a little bit of a, you know, a plus mark to him on how well he gets around there. Yeah, going to our GTA category, Dan Knox and that SRT Viper finally getting a win in the GTA category. Debuted that car at St. Petersburg first time out. Had some teething problems. Now, I really like what World Challenge has done with this GTA category, allowing gentlemen drivers to come over. Michael Mills was able to finish second in his effort racing Porsche GT3. Now, that's a class that was on Saturday. On Sunday, it was Marcelo Hahn and that blue pharmaceutical rider engineering Lamborghini Gallardo getting his second win, becoming the first first GTA driver to double up in victories. Now we look at the IMSA, which we'll talk about next, but that also has the gentleman driver class with GTD, and uh, the you know we go to all the way to Lamar with the GT amateur class. Do you think that we need to focus more on these amateur drivers or gentleman drivers, so to speak, than the pro guys, or should we just shut them out to begin with and uh, say, hey, if you want to race, you got to race at the top level like Johnny O'Connell's, like Andy Pilgrim's, like Westbrook, uh, stuff like that. What's your thought on that, Peter? Well, I think uh, two things I'd like to, you know, I saw Gary Johnson, the head of uh, Chrysler Motorsports or Dodge Motorsports, however you want to say it. And I got to tell you, you know, it's good to see the Viper programs both in GTD and in World Challenge GTA. They're stepping up that Dodge program. I, you know, I think that Gallardo is probably the class of the field in, in World Challenge GTA. But, you know, the, the Dodge is, you know, making an effort, which is good to see. Uh, as for the, the gentleman drivers, I mean, that's what makes road racing in America go around. You know, you got to have a guy that pays for it because, 
the sponsorships aren't that big to just do, you know, big professional type, you know, factory teams. So, I mean, there's a few of those, but to, to fill the field up and good racing, then I think that you definitely need to cater to those gentlemen drivers that want to do it. I mean, the GTA guys put on a great show, you know, at Detroit with the Pirelli World Challenge. And I mean, that, that GTD race, you know, with us was a street fight. So I think, I think we got to cater to them. And I think, you know, these two, I think it's a great approach, GTA and GTD. We're back at Detroit for Belle Isle for the IMSA series, the prototypes and GTD going to the prototypes category. Boy, Peter, you guys had a great run. Tell us what happened there. Well, once again, you know, it's a street circuit and a, and a real, real fight with the prototypes and the, and the P2 cars. And so I go to the Daytona prototypes. So if the action started off right in qualifying, that was a nail biter. There was, you know, a couple of cars that were real quick, the zero one of Ganassi, you know, us Spirit of Daytona and of course the, the 10 car. So, you know, we were all battling for the pole and luckily Westbrook was, you know, on the top. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, here comes Dial and the P2 car and sets quick lap. And then, so then Westbrook goes ahead with the second to last lap and Dial beats him again. And then coming to the line, Westbrook pulls it out by one one hundredth. So it was for the, for the pole position, it was an ungodly street fight there between a P2 car and, and a Daytona prototype. Well, looking for the street circuit where we talk about before, especially in that first segment, that the Daytona prototypes, the big torque, always had the advantage on the street circuit. It came down to a street fight, a lot of contact, a few yellows, debris everywhere, but near the end, the officials did let the race play out. Good decision or bad decision? Well, I mean, I hate to say this. I've heard there's a lot of behind the scenes complaining about the calls that were made at Mazda Laguna Seca. The, the, the issue I think I have, I, to be honest with you, I think it's a good thing. I think that's American road racing. I think you ought to be able to rub and you know, beat and bang and, and you know, do do rough kind of racing. I don't think you should be allowed to dump guys, but that's kind of, this, the rubbing that they let go on at Detroit was, I think, the correct way to do it. The problem is, is that's not the, the racing we've been doing for the last four other races. And, you know, so guys are kind of confused. We didn't know if we could rub or not rub. And honestly, they kind of let the, you know, go ahead and get it on boys. So I, hopefully this is the, the what the call is gonna be from now on. and. You know, let them rub a little bit, and you know, let's let's do what you know the United States is good for. Let's rub, you know, rubbing's racing. So I, I like the the tough street court race as it was in at Belle Isle, but hopefully it'll continue. Well, in the prototype category, it was the brothers of Ricky Taylor and Jordan Taylor getting the win. Valiente and Westbrook were second in that Spirit of Daytona prototype. Boy, the brothers, the first time they've won in that Wayne Taylor racing car together as a team and a pretty special place to do it running that Corvette at Detroit. Well, I, I got to tell you, you know, uh, Ricky did, you, you know, it was a street fight. You could tell that uh, the Daytona prototypes were stronger on, the, on like the restarts or whatever. And then once those P2 cars get the tires up to temp, then they're coming back to us. One, you know, so it was a real battle, and I think if Westbrook had one more lap, we might have won the thing. But between the five car, the Action Express five car, you know, Ricky Taylor and and Westbrook, it, I mean, it was just a major battle there. That last three laps, it was incredible. You know, I guess uh, I guess the Action Express car is a little upset because they cut a tire down. You know, Ricky was blocking pretty good, and and uh, they ended up cutting a tire down, but. Man, I'm glad to see Robbins racing. But what a what a finish! What a whale of a finish! You know, and and the Spirit of Daytona come up just a little bit short. Well, going back to the GTD category, it was Balzon and Jeff Westfall in that Ferrari getting the win, and that was a battle there too. I believe we had uh, at the start of the race when qualifying five different manufacturers in the first five positions. Hard to do with balance of performance. We talked about that at IMSA all year, and now they hit it right on the button there at Detroit at a street circuit. Boy, that was a battle in itself too in the GTD category. Well, I was sitting out there in the on the back stretch in the little kink before seven, and I was right in the impact zone. And I'll tell you right now that that GTD battle was a war. Uh, you know, in the beginning of the race, it looks like that R flying lizard Audi R8 was going to be the class of the field. And then, of course, Balzon comes on, you know, just turns it on the Ferrari. But I'm telling you, that was a 10 car wad that every time they'd go through that little kink, I just knew I was going to be in the crash with them because it was amazing. You know, they were nose to tail or side by side. And, 
you know, they, at most of the times they're blocking prototypes to try and keep their position with GTD. You know, we talked about amateur racing or, you know, the gentleman drivers, but from the beginning to the end, that GTD race was just incredible. I mean, it, it was, you know, just heart stopping watching those guys trying to battle for position. Yeah, you mentioned that with the uh, Spencer Pompelli and the Flying Lizard Audi R8. Seems like he had a run on balls on, went a little bit uh, wide through one of the corners, got some debris on his tires, was never able to recover. What's next for the IMSA series on the prototypes and the DTKS? I know next week we have Kansas, and that goes back to Continental and the prototype challenge cars. Yeah, I'm on my way to Kansas. That's for the Continental challenge cars. And then we have the, the P2 and... Uh, PC cars, the P, uh, prototype challenge. So I'm sorry, no, the LMPC cars and, and the prototype challenge cars out there with a double header 40 minute race at Kansas. Now we did make a little bit of a mistake last week when we actually said that the uh, uh, GTLM cars were gonna be at Kansas and unfortunately that's not the case. They'll actually be, a majority of them, especially Corvette racing will be at Le Mans. Well, that, could, that wraps up the IMSA at Detroit in Belle Isle. Up next, we'll go to New Jersey Motorsports Park for round number five and six of the Pirelli World Challenge Touring Car category. That's coming up next. This segment of the Racing Insiders was brought to you by Go Pro, Be a Hero. Want to keep up with all the racing action at the track? Well, download the new Go Racing TV iPhone and Android app. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Insiders, I'm Jeff Lepper in Folsom, California, Peter Keynes in Cocoa Beach, Florida. We're going to go to New Jersey, all the way up there in the Northeast, and it was New Jersey Motorsports Park for the Pro World Challenge, round number four, five and six of our touring car categories, and Michael DeMio in the touring car. You can't say enough about that guy now. Has You have to count his race victories on two hands, getting six wins. Shay Holbrook, we'll just do highlights real quick and we'll talk about it, but she gets two race wins in the TCA category, and in TCB, it was Brian Price on Saturday, and... Tyler Palmer gets his debut win of the year on Sunday. Well, going back to that TC category, Peter, Michael DeMio, boy, this kid can get it done. Six race wins, six in a row, and he's got a strong team with that Compass 360. Yeah, I know. It definitely looks like you need a, a Civic SI and, and TC, and Michael seems to be the top pilot for those cars. I mean, a great victory, and I mean, he, he, can he be beat, I guess, you know. Now does World Challenge put a bounty on his head and see if somebody can knock him off? I don't know. Yeah, that's all part of the marketing, right, Jeff? I was going to say, yeah, maybe, maybe we can make that happen. Let's, uh, let's, let's Facebook that out and tweet that out and see if anybody wants to do it. I know some of the other competitors are going to want to do it. One of those being Kevin Anderson making his debut in Pearly World Challenge. Ran an old Salines Mazda RX-8, which Charlie Solomon's car that he raced in TC last year. He was able to get two second-place finishes for that Mazda RX-8. Great run for him. And then Carl Thompson, the team leader there at Compass 360, returning to the driver's seat, able to get a third-place finish on Sunday. So great action in the touring car category. Going back to the TCA category, we mentioned Shea Holbrook getting two wins in her true car Lucas Oil Honda Civic Si. Now, she needed to recover. She got a couple of penalties at Mossport, had a technical violation on Saturday at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, lost 95 points for that, and then had a driving infraction on Sunday and lost 20 points, so 115-point loss, and she comes through and gets two victories. Uh, good run for the girls here this weekend as we also had Emily Tomanovich making her debut in Pirelli World Challenge, ran Mazda MX-5 Cup with C.J. Wilson last year. She comes over with the Emic Volkswagen Jetta GLI this year. But boy, Shea Holbrook putting it to the boys and the youngsters as 17-year-old Jason Cherry and 16-year-old Ernie Francis Jr. on the podium in TCA. Boy, you got to think, uh, are these youngsters coming there for us, Peter? Yeah, I got, you're right. I, I, you got to give it to Shea. I mean, again, it looked like in the TCA deal, that was a, always a Mazda MX-5. You know, they were winning a ton with Ernie Francis Jr., so good shout out to Shea for coming through on another Honda Civic. So 
and, and I gotta tell you, you know, I'm like we said a couple weeks ago, I'm very impressed with these young kids, you know. I guess they've been driving for 15 years. They started at four or something in go-karts, so I guess they are seasoned veterans, but damn, it sure makes me feel old. Yeah, well, speaking of old, Nate Stacy able to get a podium place when we go to our TCB category. He won the final race at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. He's got car number 14 on the side of his Motorsports Development Group Ford Fiesta, and it's car number 14 for a reason, because that's his age. 14-year-old Nate Stacy able to get a podium at New Jersey Motorsports Park there. It was Brian Price in the Unlimited Auto Body for, um, Honda Fit getting his fourth win of the year on Saturday. And then Sunday, Tyler Palmer in that Mini of Charleston, Mini USA, Robbie Davis's championship winning car from last year. He's able to get a win on Sunday. And boy, TCB, talk about these little small subcompact cars putting on a race at New Jersey Motorsports Park. They were nose to tail. They're so equally matched, it's going to take a mistake or something to happen for these guys to get around. But that's got to be one of the most exciting races taking place in the country with these little small subcompact Pat cars there, Peter. Yeah, no, I, I'm, you know, I'm intimate with that uh, TCB program or the B-Spec program, so I'm glad to see such good competitive racing, and also I'm glad to see a Ford Fiesta on the podium there for a long time. You know, we got a lot of gruff that, you know, the balance of performance was wrong and those Fiestas couldn't run up front, and well, I guess they're proving that wrong, so I, I, I think, you know, it's a great series. Hopefully, you know, it, it keeps growing. Uh, uh, what were there, 10 or 12 cars there, Jeff? And you know, it's the most inexpensive racing there is going. You know, brake pads last forever. You run four gallons of fuel worth of, you know, a weekend, and, you know, the, the racing's intense as hell, and it sure te teaches you momentum. Well, the guy that had his debut breakthrough at the TCB category was Paul Holton in his Radium True Car Honda Fit. The kid's been fast all season long, 17-year-old junior in high school from Tallahassee, Florida. He was led early in the TCB category. Unfortunately, he still got a lot to learn with car control, pushed it a little too hard, ran off course, and ended up dropping back to fourth. But I got to think that he's just about to make a breakout in the Pro World Challenge uh, TCB category. Going to Miami, what a place to go race. But Formula Drift for round number three, Miami Heat, makes their racing debut at Miami. First time they've been down that far in Florida, but it was... Long Beach race winner Vaughn Gittin Jr. and his Monster Energy Ford Mustang getting the win. Chris Forsberg, the force Forsberg, in his nitrous oxide energy drink. I refuse to say what his sponsor is, which is NOS. It's, it's Nitrous Energy Systems. That's what it stands for. Say it right. But in his Nissan 370Z gets second. And then Moen, Kenny Moen gets third on the podium in Formula Drift. A great show there. Great fans in Miami. It's great to see that series expanding out in their 20th year going to different, or sorry, 15th year going to different venues and locations. Yeah, I gotta give, I still got to give a call out to my good buddy, uh, Chelsea. I guess he got knocked out in round two. But, you know, for a privateer, I still love Chelsea and his BMW. And hopefully he gets a little help and some sponsorship and get, get back to the you know, the podium ways that I know he's capable of. But what a great show. If I wasn't stuck in, where was it? Oh, I was in Detroit. I think I would have been at Miami this weekend. I'm sure the, the bikini action was probably good at that Formula Drift in Miami. Well, that's what it's about in Formula Drift. It's all about the show and putting on a good show was Formula D there. They had a great live stream audience through Formula D. A lot of great things happening, great giveaways. If you get a chance to head out, go to FormulaD.com, check out the schedule, see where they are in your area because it is quite a spectacle to see. And you talk about Chelsea, yeah, he had a huge impact with Tyler McQuarrie. McQuarrie able to get his car fixed and uh, ended up losing to Moen in the semifinals. But, boy, Chelsea put on a great show there. Unfortunately, just had a bad incident. Let's go to Le Mans, the 24-hour race coming up just a little less than 10 days away. But the test day took place this weekend. That was exciting to see the Corvettes up near the top in the GTLM category. But it looks like Porsche is going to have the advantage so far in the GTLM category. But Jörg Burstmeister actually ran through the sand traps, got that car airborne by about six feet, damaged that Porsche. It's on its way back to Stuttgart. They actually flew it overnight to get repairs done to get it back in time for qualifying for the 24-hour race at Le Mans. And I got to think, Peter, you've done the 24 hours of Daytona going to the 24 hours of Le Mans. Do they really need to mad thrash it to get it ready for qualifying? Or is it just more they just want the track time? No, I mean, you definitely want the track time and get everybody comfortable and try and get what your package is going to be. But uh, good God, that puts us, that Porsche team behind the eight ball. I mean, essentially the same thing happened to us at the Spirit of Daytona. 
this last year, you know, with the crash of the test, and then, you know, you got 30 days to re rebuild that visit, visit florida.com Corvette. And I mean, it just puts so much pressure on the team and, you know, wears them out for, you know, a month away going back to the race. So yeah, I, that's a, that's a tough, tough order right there. To fix, you know, trying to fix a really crashed race car. Well, Toyota and their LMP1 program won the Bahrain round, won the Silverstone round in the World Endurance Championship. They're the favorites coming into Le Mans, and both of their cars were up at the top of the standings in the test day. Audi is going to have their work cut out for them in the prototype category at the 24 Hours of Le Mans if they're wanting to repeat. So do you think, Peter, this might be Toyota's year? Will we see a second Japanese manufacturer finally get their win in 24 Hours of Le Mans? Well, I hope so. I mean, they're definitely putting you know, for putting forth the effort and man, it's gotten down to where you just hope it's anybody but Audi. <laughs> That's a terrible thing to say. <laughs> well, you got to see that with <laughs> Nissan making a big uh, push towards LMP1 as well. Right. They'll be debuting that next year. So great growth in the prototype category, but yeah, Audi's going to have to have some work getting going. Oh, well, and the other thing is I got to tell my funny story. You know, the, 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 Taylor brothers in Westbrook and Valiente weren't real happy with each other the way they raced each other in Detroit. And then I was sitting outside the racetrack and there they all go with like a bunch of little Tinkerbells going off to Le Mans together. So it was both Taylor brothers and Westbrook laughing and carrying on. So I guess they didn't hold a grudge too long. Yeah, it's one of those, uh, we ended up having a fight at a school bully. Then you guys are the best friends for the rest of the year, right? Exactly. There you go. Well, that's it for our coverage of the race weekend. Up next, are you kidding me? What's going on in our minds? Stick around. Are you kidding me? Well, my are you kidding me has got to be the fans in the Northeast. New Jersey Motorsports Park puts on a great event. Chris Banker there, his staff there with the marketing department, really promoted the heck out of this race. It was ARCA, the SCCA Trans Am, Pirelli World Challenge Touring Car, SCCA Pro IT. Just a great parethla of racing taking place. Great facility, beautiful track, awesome facilities. They've really upgraded that track since it opened in 08. Done a great job, and yet, Northeast fans, you guys don't come out. I don't understand it. We talk about it. I get Facebook messages saying, please come up and race at Lime Rock. Come race at New York. Come race at Monticello. Come race at New Jersey. We're there. You guys are two hours away. Take a train. Take a cab. Drive down there. Carpool. Do whatever it takes. Support your road racing because I was at New Jersey. There was no fans. It was very unfortunate to see. I mean, here's ARCA. NASCAR cars. And you got NASCAR cars and you guys don't even want to come out for a race? Come on. Let's go. That's what's my are you kidding me? Yeah, Jeff, I agree that that New Jersey track's a great little race facility. The weather's sometimes iffy, but the best part about it is that Borgata Casino is less than an hour away, and you can always get in trouble there after the race weekend. Up next, let's look at the racing calendar. Next week, we got the Continental Challenge Tire Series going to Kansas Speedway. Peter, you'll be there along with the prototype challenge cars. Global Rallycross takes place at the X Games at Circuit of the Americas. So got a great racing weekend. What are you looking forward to on your end, Peter? Yep, Jeff, I'm off to Kansas to the Continental Challenge race there at the Kansas Speedway, a wild little roval um, to help out Irish Mike and the two Hyundai Genesis. Hopefully we can get a good top five finish and, and uh, stay in the top 10 of the points. Well, full race weekend schedule for everyone. Make sure you tune in next week to the Racing Insiders. For Peter Keen in Cocoa Beach, Florida, I'm Jeff Lepper in Folsom, California. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week.